Hey guys, last week we secured SSH and improved the security and audit score of our Ubuntu server with the help of Linus. We have some more settings and tools to install to further boost security and auditability of your servers. So this will be the last installment in the Linux hardening series, but if there is anything you would like us to cover in a future video, then please leave a comment below. So we have a number of tools that we are going to install and configure, most of which will help you to manage your server. But before we begin, let's run Linus to get our score from last time. As you remember, we changed the port number, so I'm adding the switch uh, dash p with the new port number. Okay, so we're logged in. Uh, let us run Linus. As you recall, this will take uh, a few minutes to run, but not very long. Let's, uh, let's see what uh, comes through. So if you've been watching our uh, last videos in this series, you'll know that um, Linus gives you a list of recommendations, which you can see here as I scroll up. And we've got 39 recommendations and three warnings. And we're not going to worry about these. We're going to look at resolving some of the recommendations. So if we scroll back down, let's take a quick look at our index. It is 66. So we are going to be improving upon that today. So there was a few things I missed out when I was configuring SSH in the last video. So let's just sort those out first. And we're using nano text editor. It is the compression, max auth tries, and max sessions, and the TCP keep alive that will be changing. Okay, so that's the max tries and sessions. Keep alive. And finally, compression, which is currently set to delay, but we're going to set that to no. We are also going to set the banner. Now, we previously set it to none, but now we're going to change that to slash etc slash issue, and we will update that file shortly. It's control X and Y to save, and we'll do you know, SSHD. SH, SSHD is the daemon, which we're going to check to make sure we have no errors, which we appear not to. And we will do a reload. There we go. Right, 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a um, an authorized user warning or an unauthorized user warning to our SSH login. So we're just going to edit the issue file, etc slash issue and issue.net. So let's go ahead with that. So at the moment, this is what it will display when you log in using SSH. We don't really want that. I've already prepared one, so I'm just going to copy my pre-prepared banner. I'm just going to paste that in there. Do Control V to paste into your terminal. Control X and Y to save, and we'll do the same thing for issue.net. So we'll delete the original content and paste in the new banner. Control X and Y. Okay, so we've updated our banner message. The next thing to do, I'm going to do a number of different things before we log out and log in just to make sure everything is set correctly. We are going to copy our jail configuration for fail to ban and we're going to copy it into a local file to ensure that uh, any changes that we make do, sorry, any changes don't override our uh, current configuration. So let's go sudo cp for copy slash etc slash fail to ban slash jail dot conf. We're going to put that into etc slash fail to ban slash jail.local excellent we are now going to make our password security a little bit more strict uh, by editing the uh, login defs file and we're just going to make the passwords expire after a period of time um, so that we can maintain better password security so sudo slash etc slash login dot deaths. Okay, it would help if I uh, typed nano first. There we go. So what are we going to change in it? We're looking for the password age the minimum and the maximum, and we're also going to adjust the amount of time that it gives us to remind us of when to change the password. We're also going to change the U mask. That's the uh, the default file mask. Uh, the settings that you get for group and user, uh, just to make those a little bit more secure. There we go. So it's currently set to what's that? Ninety nine thousand days. I think that's a bit too long. So let's just change that to something more like thirty. And we're going to have a minimum age of one. Essentially, that means that uh, you can't change your password within one day of having already changed your password. And we'll just extend the warning time to 10 days instead of 7. That so gives you 10 days to change your password. And that is it for those. Control X and Y to save. Okay. Next, we are going to edit the resolve config to set up some name servers and we've got we're going to add two name servers to the resolve file sudo nano slash etc slash resolve conf. so the default is your local host but we're just going to add two more 
and we're going to use the local IP gateway, uh, gateway, two, five, four. and I'm also going to use an external one as well. There we go. Okay, so we've done a fair amount of configuration there. We are now going to install some additional packages uh, using APT. The uh, ones to take note of would be ARP Watch and SysStat and Audit D. Uh, these are going to give you some additional um, auditing capabilities. ARP Watch will monitor. Uh, ARP traffic um, that will protect you against if anybody happens to be on the local area network that your server is connected to it would hopefully prevent anyone from uh, poisoning the ARP protocol and uh, enabling uh, potentially hijacking your um, your traffic and passing it through their own gateway so let's go ahead and install those. I'm just going to copy and paste that because that's a lot of typing. Okay, and we're going to, if you get any prompts, uh, for example, Postfix, if you have Postfix installed on your server, you don't want it to override anything. So just select no configuration and that will leave as it was previously if it existed previously okay installation can take a little bit of time um, but in my case it didn't take, seem to take as long as uh, I was expecting so that's good Right, so we've got a couple of things we need to configure now that we've installed, um, which one was it, system stat, sys stat, and also audit D, both of those will need configuration and activating. So let's do this now. So by default, sysstat is not enabled. So we just need to change that from false to true. Save it. And then using systemctl, we need to enable and start. So let's do that. Similarly, we need to make some uh, changes to audit, audit daemon. Um, specifically, we actually need to give it some rules to follow. Now, I'm not going to write out my own rules for this. I did find uh, a very nice repository on GitHub um, that has some extremely good rules settings. So we're going to use that, and I will just copy and paste those from the git and it's from this chap here neo 23xo and i'm just going to copy this now some of these may not apply to you um, i would recommend going through all of the rules and making sure that you're happy with them and that they are suitable for your own system but that will be perfectly fine for us so i've copied and let's just edit the rule set that we want. So we're going to go sudo nano slash etc slash audit slash what is it rules dot d 
Perfect. Dot rules. Okay, so we've got some content in here. We're just going to remove that content and replace it with our own. There will be a link to the Git repository uh, in the description. And we do control V to paste that in and we'll just page up so you can just see it's all there. Here we go and control X and Y and there we go. So now that we've done that, we are just going to restart audit daemon so that it takes those changes. There you go. So we've uh, done some configuration, added some new tools to uh, make our system more auditable and more secure. Uh, we're now going to do a update of the, the uh, packages repository on APT and uh, just to make sure that we have everything up to date. Uh, but it'll also give me an opportunity to show you some of the other packages that we've installed, like uh, need restart, show versions, etc. Uh, so let's do that APT update. So there should be some packages that need updating. Yep, we have 11, so we're going to upgrade those now. And this does include a um, kernel upgrade, uh, which is handy because it now it should uh, prompt me about restarting services and needing to restart the system, which is something that is provided by the tool need restart. Okay, as part of the um, update, um, you may get prompted to um, check the settings of your SSH. Generally speaking, you probably want to keep your original I certainly want to keep the original since we made some uh, significant changes. So I'm just going to select keep the local version. But you could, if you want to check, you can show the differences if you want. And as you can see uh, on here, it wants to change the port back to port 22. Definitely something we don't want to do. So uh, let's just come back out of this. You could also, if you wanted to, merge changes, but we, as I said, we're not going to do that. We're just going to keep the original settings. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, um, with tools like Need Restart, we get additional prompts when uh, updating the system's packages. This one is telling me that we now have a kernel upgrade and the system is going to need a restart. So we're just going to hit OK for that. And now it's going to prompt you, or prompt me in this case, which services it wants you to restart. So we're just going to make sure they're all checked off. We don't want anything not starting up. So it's going to restart those system services and we are done. So the final thing to do is we are going to reboot our system. So sudo reboot now of course that is now going to kick me off of the ssh session that's okay so let's do that and i will pause for a moment while the system reboots it's a good opportunity for a coffee break okay so the system has booted up and i've uh, logged back in um, as you can see, we now have a brand new banner um, when we log into SSH. 
So now that we've gone through all of those configuration changes, uh, this would be a good point to see if we've made any progress on our audit score. Okay, so our audit has completed and taking a quick look at our index, we have indeed improved things. We're now up to an index score of 77. So I think we've done a pretty good job so far of securing and improving our Ubuntu system. So there's still going to be a number of items in the recommendation list. Some of these will be appropriate for you some of them will not. Uh, it is possible to remove um, certain uh, tests from Linus um, and that will obviously change what your score is going to be. So there we go. That concludes everything that I wanted to go over. So now that we've covered everything uh, that I wanted to go over with Linux hardening and Linux auditing, um, that brings us to the end of this series. If you have any questions, comments, or would like me to go into more detail on some of the tools covered, please comment below. Thank you for watching, and we hope you have found our content useful. Please subscribe if you haven't already and give us a thumbs up or leave a comment.